from Hollywood, the television capital of the world, it's time to go reeling through the greatest television shows of all time on Couch Potato! Hi there, I'm Joe Alaski, and pay close attention because there's going to be a pest. And here he is, my next door neighbor and favorite host, Mark Summers! <laughs> Thank you. Welcome to Cash Potatoes, the game focusing on the best of television, both past and present. You never know what show might pop up right there on our TV sets, but before we get to that, let's get to this. Our team, starting to my left, they call themselves the Cosbys. <laughs> our gentlemen, I'd like you to meet Glenn, Derek, and the famous Olivers down on the end there. How are you? Fine. Now, Glenn, sitting here, that puts you as the captain, and uh, how did you all get together? Well, um, my best friend, who I'm sitting with, uh, always notices how much we look at TV and names and things like that. Uh -huh. And when this came on, the advertisements, we went directly for it, and it was his idea, and I love him for it, and see what uh, we can do. Derek is your best friend, so where does that make Oliver? <laughs> they need a third. They need a third person, <laughs> and you were ready to go. Yeah, huh? I just happened to be there. <laughs> okay, well, I'm glad you're here. Cosby's are here. Say hello to a team that's won a pretty good share of money. They call themselves the Mash Haters. We have the famous Kathy, Hi. Bruce, Mark. and the infamous Anita right on the end there. And you've uh, earned $6,000 so far. You ought to be happy about that. Have you thought about uh, how you're going to spend that money, Kathy? Well, we bought a new VCR. Did you really? Yeah. All right, get all the bells and buzzers and whistles on this one? All right. And, uh, yeah. Okay. And Bruce, how are you? You look uh, a little uh, disturbed today. No, I'm fine. <laughs> sort of staring out in his face. Just fine, Mark. I'm just fine. All right. All right. Let's talk about the rules here <laughs> on Couch Potatoes. We're going to ask you anything and everything about television from daytime, prime time, even commercial time. And any time there's something on the tube, you can bet a couch potato will be there. And each round begins with a tune-in question, and the team that answers correctly earns 25 rating points in control for the spin-off questions that follow. Whichever team has the most rating points at the end of the game will win $1,000 and then go on to play our Channel Roulette bonus game. And you know what that's worth? $5,000. Let's get started. <laughs> Tune in questions for the Mash Taters and for the Cosbys. Good luck. Perry Mason, Barnaby Jones, or M Squad. From which of these shows might you read this TV listing? Lieutenant Trag, arrest. Yes, and it's Anita. That would be Perry Mason. That would be right. You are absolutely right. It was Lieutenant Craig arrest Della Street for typing 75 words per minute in a 45 word per minute zone. Can her boss get her a marginal release? And you have 25 uh, rating points and control for this uh, spinoff round on the subject of TV listings. And there's our, our, our potato on the uh, cover of that magazine. Good luck. You all play for 25 rating points. Lieutenant Gerard stakes out an arm wrestling competition after reading the rules. The rules are one arm only. Kimball never shows, and Gerard enters therapy. What show is it? <laughs> Kathy. The Fugitive. You are right. Another 25 for you. <laughs> da, 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 da. And there's Richard Kimball. And do you know what state he was uh, running away from? Indiana. Oh, boy, you know that. Boy, where did that come from? <laughs> okay, Kathy. <laughs> Bruce and Anita, a question for you. Mrs. Pinchon insists that animals take pictures of Lou in the steam room. When Billy accidentally prints them in the trib, the fur begins to fly, especially on Lou's back. Name the show. Yes, Anita. Lou Grant. You are right. Another 25 for you. Ed Asner playing that part. And Bruce, can you make it a clean sweep? We'll find out right after this question. Penny Robinson faces death on an alien planet where they prohibit the placing of mayonnaise on a corned beef sandwich. Will Dr. Smith save the day? What's the show? Yes. That's Lost in Space. You've done it again. Yes. <laughs> The Mash Haters currently have 100 rating points, and we haven't heard from the Cosbys yet, but guess what? We're going to start off round two with another tune-in question, and here it comes. Everybody plays. I-H-P, I-M-F, or I-H-O-P. In which of these groups would you find the highly gifted students? Yes, that would be Anita. I-H-P. Yes, Individual Honors Program. Good job, another 25 rating points. And we're going to focus uh, this round on the hit TV show, Head of the Class. And our first question goes... Excuse me, there's somebody at the door. Come on, please. Look, it's Christine Hodge from Head of the Class right there. <laughs> you brought your book. Yes. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine. Thank you, but you're not in the right place. Yeah, I believe you are. You see, uh, she's from Head of the Class. You play uh, Simone, as a matter of fact. Yes, and, uh, yes. How's your life? 
my life is terrific, but is this the Emily Dickinson Poetry Seminar? <laughs> Are you kidding? No, the, these couch potatoes barely uh, know the poetic stylings of Nipsey Russell. As a matter of fact. <laughs> Actually, we're talking about head of the class, and uh, this round is based on that. You know all about it. So uh, direct some questions to these folks right over here. Okay. If you would, I'm so glad you got that IHP. <laughs> All right. Now, the kids in our class are top-notch academically, also academically, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, but socially our growth is painfully slow. Uh, luckily, we have a teacher who understands our problems and treats us like adults. And it's really cool for his age. What's his name on the show? Yes, Anita. Charlie Moore. That is correct, That's isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, that means that uh, Kathy and Bruce are still eligible. Question number two goes in that direction. Okay. It was a thrilling event for each of us when we got to represent our country, the good old U.S. of A, in an academic competition against our worthy foreign opponents. In what foreign country did this meet? Kathy. Okay. Russia. You watch this That's show, right. don't you? All right. Batting a thousand so far. And I don't remember, Bruce, it came down to you once before. And question number three will all be dependent upon okay, you. Okay, Bruce. There's a streetwise guy in our class that Dr. Samuels feels doesn't quite belong. Uh, he's really cute. And you know what? I think he likes me. Really? <laughs> What's his name? Vinny? Yes. Vinny is not correct. Oh, is no! It? Can you take it over here, Cosby's? Yes, Derek. Bob. No. Tell him who I Bob. Well, his name is Eric Martin on the show, but his real name is Brian Robbins. So, yeah, no points are awarded that time around. We find out there's 175 rating points over here for the Mash Taters. Cosby's no points just yet, but that'll change as time goes on. Gosh, you have so much going on in your life. You have the program going on. You, yes, tell me yes. about Russia, first of all. Oh, Russia was amazing. It really was a thrilling, incredible experience. Um, we were there in Moscow for two weeks, and I brought my whole family with me. I made a whole bunch of friends. One of which is a rock star. Yeah, you mentioned you went to a concert there. Yes, I went to a rock concert, which was just nothing like you'd ever see in the States. You know? what, what's different? Well, okay, in, here when you go to a concert, if you're going to see whatever performer it is, you know their music and it's that performer. Maybe there's an opening band, but they have one basic type of music. It's uh -huh. either pop or punk or rock or blues. Um, but they just had a band and different people would come up. Different performers would come and play with the same band in the back. And then the headlining guy came out with the same band, but he sort of did everything. He did real acid rock, like this wild music. Right, could you do that one more time for me? Yeah. Good, thank you. Okay. So, I knew you liked that, Mark. Yes. But, and then he did um, um, real, like, Spanish music, the so, type of plucking the guitar, acoustic guitar. Really diversified. And very diversified. And then, like, pop music, like, um, uh, Pop music. Before we, go to, <laughs> before we go to the break, I know you're doing an advice column as well for, is it WOW yes, Magazine? Yes, for WOW Magazine. Um, Where teenagers. can they write to you? You can get a hold of me at the Burbank Studios. Um, Warner Brothers, Burbank Studios, care of head of the class. Round of applause for Christine Hodge, our special guest of the day. We're going to come back with uh, round two here, and the money gets really big. Uh, join us for more couch potatoes right after this. Right, it's round three, actually. That's what it is. You're right. Let's say hello to these folks. <laughs> Hey, did you know that Head of the Class was the first prime time comedy series to shoot inside the Soviet Union? It's very true. But could you imagine getting a Soviet report card? Might be something like this. Very good. Five A's and one B. Of course, we'll have to transfer you to Siberia, but better luck next time. We'll be right back after these words. <laughs> The show that asks, how much do you really know about the silver screen? This intermission brought to you by Memorex. Gene Hackman is one of the most respected actors of our time, having received three Oscar nominations. For what film did he first win the Best Actor Award? On our 10-point scale, this question has a difficulty rating of 5. <laughs> Was it live or new HBS2? Gene Hackman won the Oscar for his portrayal of Popeye Doyle in The French Connection. Hi there, we're back. I 
I lied to you when we went to the break. It's not round two. We're ready to play round number three, where we double the stakes to 50 rating points for each correct answer. And Cosby's, normally I have to say you're a little behind. You're a lot behind now, but you'll, you'll catch up in no time, I'm sure. We have some uh, tune-in questions for everybody. Let's see who gets it. Mission Impossible, the FBI, or SWAT? Which of these three series uses this as a theme song? Listen. Yes, Glenn? SWAT. SWAT is incorrect. It's Mission Impossible. That means you folks get it automatically, but you don't get any money. The important thing is we are going to discuss the subject of Mission Impossible right up there. We'll see our group of folks, and uh, here's a question worth 50 rating points. Kathy, Bruce, and Anita. Barbara Bain's hubby in real life appeared on the show as Roland Hand, the guy who never seemed to get tired of peeling his face off. Name him. Yes, Kathy. Martin Landau. Right again. You are batting 1,000 today. Another 50 rating points added. You now have 225. Bruce and Anita, gosh, will Bruce be on the bubble again, or will it be Anita? We'll find out right now. Greg Morris was the electronics expert who always managed to get into the act without getting into the acting. Who? What was his name on the show? Yes, Anita. Barney. Barney is right. Very nice. Matter of fact, uh, his son, Phil, is the new electronics genius on the new Mission Impossible. And Bruce, gosh, we've been down this road before, Hello, haven't we? Uh, is this planned, or...? I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> Another 50, and this would bring you to 325. After Star Trek burned out on NBC, which star beamed over to Mission Impossible as a character named Paris? It's worth 50. Yes, can you take it over here, Cosby's time ran out over there. Anybody? Yes, Derek? Peter Lupus. No, actually, it was Leonard Nimoy. Leonard Nimoy. So, we find out once again, Cosby's having scored 275 for the MASH Taters. We're going to start off round four with another tune-in question. Everybody plays. Holy mackerel, holy smoke, or holy smoked mackerel? Which was the favorite expression of the kingfish on Amos and Andy? Yes, Oliver. Mackerel. Holy mackerel is right. That's it. 50 points on the board, Oliver. Now, they're really glad that you were the third guy here, huh? All right, you've got control of this round, and the subject is sounds fishy to me. What does it look like? Okay, our potato with fish. Okay, Glenn, Derek, Oliver, I want you all to play. Charlie the Tuna can go to all the Broadway openings he wants, but when it comes to can openings, he'll never taste good enough for what brand? Yes, Oliver. Star Kid. Yes, another 50. Good job. Well, you've been the saving grace of this team so far. Now, Derek Glenn, you had to have a lot of talent to actually get to these couches. I want to see you answer some questions here. Now, this longtime host of Wild Kingdom has certainly chased his share of aquatic creatures. In fact, even his name is a little fishy. What is it? Yes, Derek. Marlon Perkins. Yes, right again. 150 rating points. All right, I realized what you guys were doing. You were going for the dramatics. You were holding back. That was it. Okay, Glenn, you're, you're sitting awful cool. Let's see if you can answer this one. You've heard of Bridge Over Troubled Water. Well, this show could have been called Bridges Under Troubled Water because Lloyd Bridges was playing scuba sleuth Mike Nelson. Name this fishy show. Yes, sir. Bee Hunt. Yes, right again. 200 rating points. So the Cosby's now have 200, 275 over here. We're going to come back with the couch-up round where the score can change in a hurry, and I think these guys are going to try and do that. Let's see together right after this. Well, if you think that sounded fishy, hello. I'm Marlon Gerkins for Wilds of Omaha's Mutual Kingdom. Today, my courageous assistant, Jim Howler, stalks the dangerous and elusive American yuppie. There's Jim in their native habitat, an aerobics class. There's Jim standing in the open doorway, loudly calling out his phone number. Notice the gorgeous gaggle of yuppie chicks who are now surrounding Jim, and one large male of the species. And just as the large aerobics instructor protects his flock by violently punching out Jim, and thus ending his exciting...